What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at an extremely special knife from Shirogorov that uh, it was recently released at the CCKS uh, 2024 in February. So I've got, uh, it took me a while to grab one of these, to find one, uh, to do a video on, but I did want to find uh, some time to do a video, try to get this up as soon as possible for you guys as uh, there's not a whole lot of content on this and conversely I don't even have a spec sheet uh, to do this video so um, apologies in advance if I uh, mix anything up but you know what I'm kind of at the point now where um, you know I, I tend to mix a lot of things up so I'm okay with it um, all good um, as a reminder check out my web store bladezilla.ca and if uh, you haven't been there here's my quick phone on it Bladesilla.ca, a lot of sure grow-offs, a lot of stuff on there in Canada, ready to ship uh, across the country. So, or into the U.S. if you're into that, you can also accommodate that. But um, anyway, grab a cup of coffee if you're watching this first thing in the morning. Uh, fill up your beer, your whiskey or whatever if it's evening. Sit back, relax, and let's take in the good times of a full-sized 111 titanium sheer gore off custom division knife in magna cut which is not very common on any of their knives um, i'm going to do some comparisons today with some other custom division knives simply because i have uh, a handful of them with me right now and uh, typically when i film custom division videos i try to have uh, you know a handful of them on hand so um, just the way it works this is my second video third video that i filmed in the last two days on custom divisions so i assume there's some custom division content coming out down the channel um, anyway let's get started with weights dimensions measurements um, i also want to comment that my goodness the uh <laughs> the camera lens is normally zoomed in more than it normally is and or than it is right now and uh, it's just funny to see that uh, this is such a huge knife and to, to give you an idea in proportions like I can fit multiple neons essentially in the same size of this like this is a humongous pocket sword that's what she said yes I am sorry so we're coming in at uh, a hair under 10 inches okay uh, I guess on paper it's probably like nine and three quarter nine and seven eighths but for all intensive purposes you're you know, at about or around 10 inches. Isn't that nuts? Uh, 111, uh, typically, you know, with very few exceptions, uh, is a 111 millimeter blade. So uh, we're coming in right now uh, at four and three eighths to the grind, almost four and a half inches to the center of that choil to the end of the blade there. So huge knife, okay? Handle length coming in at, uh, what, five and a half? Something like that. Five and a half, yeah, well, five and a half inches, which is pretty cool. Um, in terms of comparables, well, we are going to walk walk down or up. What do you guys want to do? Maybe we'll just go in the middle. So I've got an F95 here. I've got a Quantum. So Quantum Blue, there you go, uh, which is like a baby in comparison. But if I put it down here, it'll look a lot bigger. And this is not... The right ratio it's honestly more like this so maybe that's what we'll do is put the 111 down here kind of one third of the way up and then we'll kind of put some comparisons because uh, it is quite a bit small well i don't know i don't like doing this ah oh, i'm struggling guys all right well there's a quantum blue and we'll grab an f95 which is essentially the same size as the quantum just a little thinner a five silk slim so there's your three uh, kind of big boys we can grab uh, you know an RJ Martin Russian overkill which is also pretty big special edition knife which is you know uh, essentially the same size as the molten overkill the denim overkill uh, etc one might be coming soon uh, let me go Stellar. There we go. There's your Stellar, which is a size down from the 
they'll do this. Which is a size down from the quantum, so you kind of have your three tiered, right? And then below that, if I can fit all these in the frame without touching any of them, we will also have a neon, or where's my hation? There we go. Hation. So there's kind of your four different Shiro sizes. And then kind of in between each of this, there's like obviously some, you know, Vegas V cards, there's some uh, commies, there's there's all kinds of little ones, you know, that kind of slot in between the middle, but these are essentially your Shirogorov range in terms of uh, sizing. Which is awesome. And I'm going to show you a couple of those, because why not? There is our Vegas V cards, and our Kami or Kami, which is basically the same size, maybe a little different, a little bigger. In terms of dimensions but let's be honest lengthwise it's pretty close put that away we've got a mayo here as well dr death which is uh, a long knife but also very thin as we can kind of see here um, if you guys haven't seen this this typically is a pretty pretty big knife in person um, and then a couple of the other kind of special editions that I have yet to do anything with on the channel. Um, obviously, a couple of these guys you probably haven't seen yet. The uh, Sigma and the Pero. Both super cool uh, Sinkovich knives, but uh, I don't think I've done anything on those on the channel. I will at some point in the next uh, month or so. And then the Bios which are longer knives, but um, thinner. So, uh, Sinkovich, or I guess special edition or collaboration piece, Sinkovich Bio, uh, and we do have both of them here right now. That is the light, and we also have the dark. So there you go. Lots of comparisons. Um, I don't know how many people are here for comparisons, but uh, it doesn't really matter, so let's do another one. Here we go, F95 inlay. See, I could just do this all day long, um, but I won't. I won't at all. We're here to see the 111. I don't have any other 111s uh, with me. Uh, I think I've got one, maybe two scheduled in the custom division realm, but uh, no ETAs on those. Um, and I don't have any production 111s uh, on hand right now. So apologies for that, but let's be honest. Let's get started talking about this. I'm probably, you know, five, ten minutes in it, and I apologize. And uh, let's, let's review. So I guess to start things off, underneath that pivot is uh, it's captive. So that this cap will not slide around. Uh, from the other side, you have to kind of use the tool and open it up from there. But this side will not slide around because there's a little bearing that sits underneath this and, and it's kind of drilled and tapped so it can't turn. So that's cool. On that pivot, if we can get real nice and close. Oh, sorry. I forgot one knife. Uh, Astrum. Sorry. That's, uh, geez. You clean the blade and it gets uh, dirty. Sorry about that. Um, there you go, Astrum Custom Division, also a longer knife, but very thin. I uh, forgot to show that. Super cool. I'm going to have to do a video on this at some point here, but uh, very cool knife. Just haven't had a chance quite yet to do anything on that. Sorry, <laughs> back to the pivot. <laughs> back to the pivot. Um, so this new pivot is found on the F95 NL. You've probably seen that already, and uh, obviously this, and the Astrums, both the Sprint Run and the custom division. Um, it's cool, and one of the reasons why uh, these knives have kind of increased uh, table price by a few hundred bucks, because there's some more technology in it, and then obviously the uh, table price as we kind of go uh, through the years here. This is filmed uh, for reference in um, late February, early March, I guess 2024. Um, you know, just the global economy, things are gradually in increasing, you know, three to five percent. So I believe table on this, I think was like 
2100 plus a show ticket, maybe 2200 US. Um, I think is kind of what the cost is on these. On the secondary market, um, you know, you're, you're looking at the floor, probably five grand US at the high end. Currently, you know, six. Uh, I've seen some go from, for more than that. Um, but, you know, in 2025, I don't know what the case would be. I'm assuming it's going to hold at five, six thousand pretty regularly without any problems because they haven't made a full titanium 111 in a very long time. And you will have seen on the channel, I think I had uh, done a couple 111s. One was the Deep Space Carbon, and I'd also done another video, I think, on a 111. Was it a bronze or something? It had a real cool copper backspacer. Um, so I've had a few of them come through, but everyone wants full tie. Um, and they're willing to pay a premium for it. So let's look at this cap one more time. Try to get close, okay? It's all milled, okay? And this is going to be kind of my theme. It's obviously littered with milling on, the, uh, on this guy. But there's like horizontal milling on this cap. And I'm hoping you can see it in 4K but it's like micro milled like crazy, okay? Then it steps up into this micro milling area here around it, which is a whole different kind of coarseness. And then it steps up into this area here, which is micro milled, okay? And then it steps up one more in coarseness level to this pocket or trapezoid of micro milling, all the while having horizontal milling left to right up top here that blends into that coarseness that is a different uh, different pattern and then down below here as well which I believe these two are the same in terms of coarseness levels but you've got one two three four different tiers plus left to right like it's filthy absolutely filthy design and then you know what in the middle let's throw a stone wash where you know it's going to sit in your pocket and collect some scratches. So let's let's stone wash that area, and uh, and and keep it all raw, it's plain Jane tie, uh, for our friends at Bladezilla. Like pretty much words out of their mouth, but in Russian because they don't speak English, um, and don't talk to me. So um, obviously there's a translation. I'm obviously kidding, but uh, <laughs> a joke. Um, there's a level of detail here that's just ridiculous and it's also on the back side obviously here on the clip which is a pretty cool new design but you've got the stepped up you know one two three four once again plus the milling left to right it's an incredibly well-made knife the clip appears to be attached internally i'm assuming that's it there and probably the tab lock is also attached with that screw if i'm guessing um, or the clip is attached in the corner, and that's just a screw, uh, which could be the case. I'm not going to open this up and look, but I will grab a light and showcase the exceptional skeletonization inside this, which is just ridiculous. Deep pockets. And do I see a screw? Yes, I see a screw on the top of the clip right here, so that must attach. And then that little hole underneath here that we see through the clip that is probably an anchor point for, yes, the tab lock. I see one, two, uh, two of them. One of them is actually under clip here. So one, two. Pretty cool. Um, just for the sake of argument, I'm going to just turn off the exposure compensation here and try to show this. It's going to look overexposed for a few seconds just because I want to uh, shine some light in here and not have the camera freak out. So let's try that. Okay, I'm back, and I'm, I'm just going to keep this temporarily here, but just to kind of show the inside of the knife, as you can see, lots of trapezoidal pockets, and let's see if it will actually focus. There you go. And the camera is obviously way overexposed, but I'm just trying to show. So you can see right now the, the clip right in the top left corner there. It, uh, it is attached internally, then we've got the two screws. You can just kind of see one and two that attaches the, uh, the tab lock. And then all that micro milling is just incredible. A uh, little bit too bright for me right now, but I'm going to turn that uh, ISO back to normal and reset this just because I wanted to show the inside there and I figured that would be cool. So one sec. 
Okay, that feels so much better, and I apologize if I uh, had a bit of an assault on your retinas there, but, uh, you know, it's we're looking at a very thin uh, spot here, and it's sometimes tough to show the inside of these knives without physically taking them apart. I, uh, I have a few friends who will take some of these apart, and I am not one of those people, typically, so I'll leave it to the pros for that. But, um, anyway, um, let's kind of keep doing our walk around on this knife. So it's obviously a tab lock. The tab is also uh, skeletonized, so I think that is an incredible detail. And, uh, you know, I've already talked about the milling and all that. Uh, your eyes immediately are drawn to this flipper tab, which is, once again, very forward of the pivot because it's a long blade, heavy blade. It's nice to have that uh, aggressive leverage. And I always, I always mention this, but I may as well do it one more time. Um, if we grab that Tom Mayo Dr. Death, I think it's a great example, if I can find it, here we go, um, where the flipper tab is behind uh, the pivot. So when you move that flipper tab ahead versus behind, what's the difference? Uh, the further you go behind it, it's like the big gear on a bicycle where uh, it's easier to pedal, right? So um, when you flick it, it doesn't always fire open all the way because it has a lot of leverage at that point, uh, or I guess a lack of leverage, I guess it'd be. And as you move it forward, it would uh, fire it out a lot quicker. So with some, a knife like this, obviously you just get used to it and give it a little more gas and, uh, you know, it comes out no problem. But, uh, you know, if you take that same concept and you move this behind the pivot with a longer blade, heavier blade, more material, it would uh, really, really come out quite slowly. Uh, so instead, it comes out real nice and smooth. Um, no issues there, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, skeletonized flipper pivot. The jimping on it is is gorgeous. And uh, as you can kind of see here, you got kind of two spots on the front here. I can never figure out what the point of that is, right? Because we have the jimping. I don't see people flicking on that to open it or anything, uh, but it is a nice little design element as you kind of rotate around. The jimping obviously in the design is different than the backspacer, which typically match, but in this case they don't, they're just a little bit different. Real comfortable, uh, you can go right up to the tip there if you can reach it. Uh, it is pinched in the middle here on the top of the blade uh, with some polished kind of satin flats, which look great and it's completed with that custom division logo, which is uh, just incredible, you know, it's, it's beautiful. I love the custom division. Anytime you see that, like, uh, for a sheer Goroff guy, that's kind of like their uh, their BMW M Series badge, where it's just, it's, uh, it's a real nice touch. So, as we go down the blade, uh, we can also see inside here, we have two different finishes. Okay, so we have the flats of the satin kind of variety, and then inside it's more of a bead blast, but there are two different finishes here that, uh, you know, it's good to realize that there are this level of detail. And if you recall on the deep space, the inside was a little bit thicker, but it was kind of broken up with a pattern that has been removed. Um, before I go into more detail, could you thumb flick it? Yes, you know. Could you reverse flick it? Yes, you certainly can. Now, can I do both of those things? That is another question. Um, I'm not willing to try with metal tripod right, you know, three inches away from the, the knife. Um, but yes, you can do it. I've seen it done. It is, is a fairly strong detent because it's a heavier blade. But can a guy flick that out there? Absolutely. Okay, and it's quite comfortable to do so. There's lots of room. There's no crazy pinch points, etc. But uh, I'm just unwilling to uh, hurt myself and put my reputation on the line. Uh, but as a knife enthusiast, um, I don't want to embarrass myself. That's basically what I'm trying to get at here. Okay? So, yes, you can reverse flip it. But anyway, design, beautiful. Nice and uh, nice and smooth inside. A couple different finishes, which is cool. As I rotate around the other side, you can see that is also maintained. And then instead of custom division, you see Magna Cut, which, uh, you know... I'm still getting some mixed reviews on. Some people love it. Some people are kind of over it. Um, I, I, I don't know which camp I'm in. In Shira Goroff, Magna Cut is very young and, and vigorous. 
Um, not on a whole lot of knives in production. I think it's only the the Molten Overkill. Was that one Magna Cut? I think it was. And then obviously Astrum CD and now this. So not too many knives are really doing Magna Cut, but let's be honest, I'm assuming they'll do more of it because it's apparently pretty good. You've kind of got that deep uh, bevel in the back, which is kind of that design element there is, is found on a lot of their knives now. And it's beautiful. They're all hand ground, obviously, and done very, very well. Um, at the tip of the blade, I should have said this earlier, so we uh, it pinches in on the top here, and then as we go down, it kind of swells back up to reinforce the tip, which is a nice detail. And then uh, on the tab lock, just super smooth. And, uh, you know, if you've ever had a Mini Quantum or uh, some of the later, obviously, Stellars and whatnot, like, it's just a, it's just a great design. I'd like to see, I'd love to see a Neon with a tab lock. I really would. I think that would be a cool knife. And to give you a reference, I'd grab a Neon here. Uh, the Hadion, sorry. They're all frame locks. And um, I would love to see these two have a little... A little freak in the sheets time and make a little baby neon because that'd be cool uh, or freak in the case uh, but anyway that's just speculation I digress um, tab lock super reliable um, easy to work on as well I'm told and uh, once again the detail on it if you kind of look at it from the side well, we'll get close up on it but if you look at this knife from the side you'll see how it's elevated so elevated means as a righty, um, it's just easy to access, even though it's, uh, what is this, a 4 mil blade, I think? Maybe 3.5? No, it looks bigger. It's probably 4 mil. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? 3.5 or 4? Well, well, it's a heavy blade. Like, it's got to be 4 mil. Um, so essentially, like, the more... The wider the blade, the more space you'll end up kind of getting between the two halves of the knife, uh, or the knife. And uh, in this case, you know, it just makes tolerances tighter and tighter. So even on like the F95 NL, the new purple and the and the bronze or copper, you know, as a production knife, they're making tolerances tighter and tighter. And uh, on a knife like this, you know, the tab lock just kind of makes some additional room, I think. Um, and obviously the ergonomics of it, like when it's sticking up like that, it's just easy to access, real nice. Um, and then as you get closer, I'll try to get the camera to focus, the detail in that specific area um, is just, I could look at it all day long. The profiling on it, it's just incredible. And if you had like a Stellaris or uh, some of the Stellars and whatnot, or the Mini Quantum, it's all very similar. It wouldn't floor me if the parts are very mocked up the same. Just the details were ridiculous, and then on both sides, as you can see, once again, milling is just beautiful. Oh, absolutely incredible! Um, underneath the back spacer, as well on the inside, I think we've got the writing for the, uh, the COA, which should match the certificate of authenticity. You may have seen it already when I had the ISO cranked up. But you can see it there, CD24, I think. Uh, if it wants to focus, come on, man. Help help a guy out. 24, uh, 01 January, or actually 01, I believe, is actually the, the model for that year. And then 08, what does it say? Number 8? Is that what we're working with? Is this number 8? Seems low. Um, I guess there's only probably 10 of them out right now. So maybe it is a single digit. Yeah, number 8. Huh. That's cool. So, uh, if you ever watch this and you're holding uh, knife number eight, well, this is it. Um, anyway, tab lock's phenomenal. And then uh, it's on roller bearings. And if you haven't had a shear go off or this is your first shear go off video, I encourage you to, uh, it's not too late, just, just walk away. Um, but roller bearings are incredibly smooth, incredibly well done. Instead of, uh, I guess, a, a quicker walkthrough on the shear go off bearings. Um, instead of it being a standard circle like this, and that would be their single row bearings, they would just put right balls kind of on a track. Multi row bearings would be kind of pinwheeled two to three, depending on model in a row, kind of like the rays of a sun. 
And then roller bearings, I always say, are kind of like hot dogs, right? Needle bearings in a uh, kind of pattern around a circle. And uh, it's not so much to aid in like smoothness, but it really helps. It uh, actually aids a lot in the side to side stability of the knife, right? Because you're spreading out the surface area and uh, just providing a lot more stiffness for a big knife such as this or any other knife that is welcome to have roller bearings. I would never say no because it's just a, uh, and a beautiful thing. And then if we go into the full customs with a few exceptions, we go into the double row roller bearings, which is cut those hot dogs in half and put them all over the place at different angles and configurations. And uh, it would, uh, it, it's just a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing, a little more fine tuned I'd say. As we work our way back to the end of the knife here, obviously we have the uh, other side, which is a smaller Shergroff bit, which is bigger than this guy back here. Sorry, smaller than this guy. Uh, and so if you're working on a knife like this, you're going to need the custom division tool. Uh, actually, no, unless, uh, sorry, inside I didn't even look. I think they're just regular screws inside. You might be able to get away without the custom division one on this, which is cool. But uh, custom division knives typically have a reverse bit, like on that, uh, where's my quantum blue, that you need uh, to have the tool for. So if I grab the quantum blue, you can take a look at it here and go, okay, that's the reverse bit. And it's a great gauge to see how the condition of a knife is, because like, if anyone's ever taken apart, they tend to show wear. Uh, so on this particular one, you can see it's nice and sharp and crisp. On the anodizing, it's a dirty knife right now, I apologize, but... Uh, you can kind of see if it's been opened up. Ah, oh, come on, man. Let's move that away. Get it to focus. There you go. Sharp edges typically means it hasn't been opened up. So, there you go. Nice thick back spacer that goes almost the whole length of the knife as well. Um, which is beautiful on the 111. That's one of my favorite features which is awesome. And then underneath on the inside, as you probably saw earlier, um, the back spacer actually has a channel in it for the blade centering that goes almost the whole length, I think. Hopefully you can see inside there. For blade centering. Just more detail work that they really don't have to do. But for some reason, uh, knife nuts like myself really appreciate. It's just a beautiful thing. On that back spacer, we've got a nice thick tab for a lanyard hole. Uh, it's not hidden like it is on the Quantum or the Turtles or anything or the F95s. Uh, it's to me not an eyesore because the knife is so bloody huge, but it's also uh, you know very usable. So you can throw some thick, beastly paracord through that and hang some some beads off, or attach it to your ear as earrings and flex to the Shirogorov Bros which is me. If you're hanging this off your ear, my god, please don't do that. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a real nice hefty backspacer with that uh, drilled in. And also, I guess on the inside of the frame, it's also beveled to even make some more room. Hopefully you guys can see that. Just another detail of functionality. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. And then all the way around. Obviously that's removable as well in the event that uh, something happens or you drop it or bend it or whatever. And then unlike some of the other knives, the uh, the backspacer is not sticking outside the handle either. So I have seen a few where uh, the only reason kind of for that extension on the backspacer is so they can extend this portion out. And uh, I think the Astrum was like that, if I remember. Yeah, there we go. So if I grab the Astrum here, see how it kind of the tip of the knife extends out of the handle. See what I'm saying? So it's kind of like it's usable, right? So the tip, you see what I'm talking about here? So the tip of the knife is outside of the frame. So they extend that back spacer so that uh, everything's housed in there. But on this guy, they don't need to do that. It's kind of all self-contained. Um, onto the clip. It's gorgeous. Obviously that screw hole that's from the inside, it's a bit of an eyesore. I don't know if there's a way to kind of hide that. Um, but 
I think it's I think it's just fine. Like let's be honest, you, you use it, you put your knife in your pocket, you're never gonna see that. But you've kind of got two finishes on the uh, on the clip itself as well. So you've kind of got the 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 flats, which is kind of got a satin quality to it, and then on the side here, you've got kind of uh, a couple different, uh, more of like an anodized finish, even up on the tip here. If it wants to focus, there you go. Uh, it's kind of a darkened tie, which is pretty nice. Just a different fit and feel. And then you've got these bumps in the middle, which I assume are to add some strength to that, uh, to the clip, or to maybe hold your jeans if you're doing that. And then a nice big strong bulge on the end there to pinch your, uh, whatever you're folding it on, for jeans, pants, sweatpants. This would be moving all, around, all over the place in sweatpants. Probably not the best idea, but um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Just a well done knife. Um, and then obviously I love seeing this, uh, obviously the pinch of the blade and the swell that goes out on the tip here and you just see how tight these tolerances are on the entire design. It's just so incredibly well done. It's a custom division knife. You're not going to see too many other knives at this detail level um, in the world um, with this kind of functionality. Um, honestly, I'm not just saying that. It's uh, They're incredible pieces of uh, timeless like, almost like art, almost like jewelry, but using kind of common materials. Even though titanium, let's let's not forget, titanium is a very expensive material to use in a frame. So we've talked backspacer, talked clip, we've talked about the tab lock um, or liner lock, whatever you're gonna call it, inset liner. The hardware, obviously, we've talked about that. I will say that for if you do want to grab a custom division tool. Uh, this is what they typically look like. They're all individually numbered as well and have five bits in it, one reverse, four others. And uh, beautiful pieces of art as well. And you get that little CD logo on the top here. Um, beautiful, beautiful. And they're numbered and whatnot, all individually. Uh, this particular one I think is 47 or 49 or something. 47, there you go. And carbon fiber, well made, kind of screw apart like this. And then they're internally threaded, just beautifully done uh, and the bits themselves are magnetic and they can use on the cyber tool as well so if you want to take the bits out and not use it and just use the bits in uh, a functional tool to get a little more leverage on the cyber tool you certainly can but uh, just figured I'd show those and uh, what else in terms of fit in hand it feels like a 111 I don't know what else I'd really say on that it's uh, it's a big knife it's a heavy knife I haven't weighed it but I'm guessing it, um, I think it's around six, six and a half, six two. I thought I was reading somewhere, but I'll weigh it. It's got to be over six ounces. Uh, there's just no way it's not five six. Apparently, I'm eating my words. I'm sorry. Five six. So I'm close. Five seven. Come on. I'm pretty freaking close. Five seven. Okay, so pretty close to six ounces, but it's a four and a half inch blade. Like, come on, it's huge. So, big heavy knife, but uh, in terms of in hand, it doesn't feel like that. It's hard to explain because it's a very thin handle, but it's tall and it has the cutout where there's no kind of break points for your fingers to fall in so you can comfortably hold it, right? If I had two more fingers, I could still fit them on here. Uh, or if I was in a work glove and, and my fingers were spread apart, it would fit no problem. And then my fingers aren't getting separated. The flipper tab kind of joins into that groove of the frame just so smoothly. So you prevent yourself from kind of sliding up on the handle too much. It's just a really well done design. Uh, I guess the biggest problem I would have with a knife like this is it's just a fingerprint magnet because it's titanium and doesn't have a anything to really hide all the all the grease and fingerprints and whatnot. So if you're gonna get it, get a get a knife, get a you know some Windex and some microfiber cloths and keep it nice and clean. But I can already see just from holding this, you know, I'm just getting little little spots from excited hands on it. Bearings on this feel uh, this one's not really broken in yet because it's brand new. 
but uh, it's already feeling really crisp and good. Heavy detent, um, and it'll just get smoother with age. If you remember the 111 that I had previously, it was just, you could park it anywhere and it wouldn't move, but then you just give it a little, little push and it would fall like just a gorgeous, gorgeous knife. Um, what I'd like to see, here's, here's my uh, magic wish list. Make a titanium 111 production knife. You know, it's, and maybe it's because, you know, they've always done the carbon 111 typically in production, but I don't know why they don't, they stay away from tie. Maybe it's a price point thing. Maybe it's, uh, the demand isn't there, but, uh, I would love, you know, make me the Stellar, the exact design of a Stellar in a 111. Perfect. And for those wondering, you know, the Stellar production knife, I think I showed it earlier, but there, make that, you know, titanium, pretty simple, done well, uh, really high-end production piece, but do this with that knife, and, and do the cutout on the blade too, and put roller bearings on it, and put a custom division logo on it, and lots of cool milling. Oh wait, that's what this is. Sorry guys. I don't know if you can tell, I'm very excited about this knife. Um, it's kind of one of my favorites. You know, I've always said on this channel, um, plain Jane tie, um, with really cool functional milling, kind of like the Astra Sprint Run, like that is just a dream knife. Uh, and this is right at the nipping of the heels, other than it's just a bigger knife with tons of detail. I might even think that my favorite part of this knife might even be here because it's a little more coarse and hides the fingerprints is really nice. But you have to give this knife credit, like spots like right here, where the milling are two different bits, two different passes, two different coarseness levels, and then obviously one, two, three, four, and then that. Like I'm thinking, I'm thinking this and the top are the same. No, well, maybe not. Maybe we got five here. This might be a little more coarse. I don't know. And the full length backspacer is just a joy to look at. You know, I, I just love it. You know, pros, everything. Cons, it's expensive. But once you buy one, it only hurts once. And you have it, and then it no longer hurts. Even the design element of this right here, right? Just pockets of milling for no purpose. It's just like this is this is the kind of knife you you bring home and you sit and you look at it and you find little angles on things, little bevels, where it's just like you guys are just spoiling us with how much detail work you're putting into these knives. And you know, inside I, I don't I would lose my mind looking inside this knife with it taken apart because I just I bet it's incredible. You know, I, I had no idea it was five and a half ounces, um, five, seven or whatever, five, six, five and a half, less than six ounces. I had no idea. And uh, that blows my mind, given that it's full titanium with a thick blade stock and uh, titanium handles and magna cut. And it's four and a half inch blade, basically, four and three eighths or whatever. Oh incredible detail incredibly smooth i don't know what else i really could say about this knife other than uh it's well done 3d milled anybody know what the backspacer material is on this it feels heavy um i'm assuming it's just titanium but a lot of their custom vision knives they make use of some other materials back there sometimes so every now and then when you're looking at it it is darker so i'm kind of wondering if that might be something different might be zerk I, that'd be cool. Um, anyway, so cool clip. Love the flipper tab. Very. Uh, if you just if you remember the uh, recent Quantum uh, WKM, that had that skeletonized tab. Really dug that. With the uh, with the cutout on the blade, just beautiful. And I love the choice of stone wash. I think that's just so clever. So I think, I think that might be it for this big beast of a pocket sword. 
that uh, you know is now currently a beautiful piece of art but uh, could be used in medieval times to probably behead people um, from quite far away given the blade length so uh, that's cool that's what it has going for it otherwise it's just a cool knife and well done and I think they're going to be um, extremely difficult to find uh, for the next year and uh, I didn't even realize this was a single digit which is even better so lucky number eight if anyone's looking for it let me know um, otherwise I think at some point this is going to hit the site don't know when but it will and uh, it's going to be a tough day because uh, I really want this really want this knife this would be so good to have that'd be like or maybe it won't make the site we'll see oh, so good all right guys well I think I've uh, nerded out here for probably half hour or 40 minutes I don't even know what the counter is at now I've stopped the video so many times um, you know I really appreciate you watching these videos check out the store bladezilla.ca uh, for any questions feedback uh, or you know if there's a knife in there you dig grab it if, uh, if there's one you don't dig then not a big deal you know check the site check out pics leave feedback comments Instagram TikTok, you name it on YouTube as well obviously where you're watching this now uh, first and foremost this is a passion project so I uh, would love to chat would love to chat nice don't be scared to, to reach out uh, but be very afraid of this knife because my god it is huge that's what she said all right guys have yourselves a great week and uh, or rest of the week depending on when this one comes out and uh, we will talk soon appreciate you guys and uh, later okay peace <laughs>